Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the issues surrounding Labour's calls for an investigation into how Boris Johnson may have overruled security concerns over the elevation of Geni Lebedev, who's the son of a former KGB agent, a spy who was active in London and linked to Putin, to the House of Lords. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So concerns about how close Boris Johnson is to Putin and Putin's agents are nothing new. They're just now more urgent. A number of people have been trying to raise the alarm over Johnson's risk to national security for years. In the wake of the Mueller report, even American lawmakers picking through the bones were asking the question, is Boris Johnson compromised? You know, because of his links to various people uh, he's very close to. And I mentioned recently, not for the first time, in the wake of the emergency surrounding the Novichok poison in the UK some years ago, while NATO leaders were meeting to discuss an attack, an actual attack by Russia on NATO member soil, our then Foreign Secretary decided he couldn't be bothered gave his security team the slip, buggered off to Italy to get drunk at the home of Lebedev, where he also met Lebedev Sr., the KGB agent. Needless to say, the idea of the then Foreign Secretary, now Prime Minister, getting drunk and shooting his mouth off in the company of Russian agents with no security team to keep him out of trouble should be hugely concerning to us. It should be hugely concerning to Conservative MPs. Doesn't seem to be. You know, when we see that Boris Johnson dragging his feet on applying sanctions on Russian oligarchs linked to Putin and doing almost nothing to help Ukraine, then those suspicions, because that's all they would be, suspicions that he might be compromised, they can only then be heightened. I mean, what are we to believe? That Johnson accepted a lot of Putin-linked money for his party and personally is very close friends with Russian agents, enjoys their hospitality a lot, but it's a total coincidence that he alone in the Western world, is not sanctioning those close to Putin now. Come off it. But one of the major alarm bells that has been ringing in the years between the Putin-backed Brexit referendum campaign and the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine was when Lebedev was elevated to the House of Lords a couple of years ago. The son of a KGB officer. At a time when Russia was not regarded as being friendly with the UK. This was post Novichok. And it was now able to vote on British laws and, and, and charging the British public for it as well. Now, I will add in here, it's been defended. It does not seem that he's actually used his position to vote on anything. I think it was James Cleverly, a senior conservative, said, oh, no, no, it's fine because he doesn't actually vote. And, and people have pointed out, hang on a minute, your defence here is that it's fine because he's too lazy to do his job. Now, it is just possible he's using the position as a social accessory. I don't know. But the risk remains because he does have access. He may not be going there to vote, but he does have access to, to some sensitive documents, potentially. You know, despite Johnson forcing Lebedev's elevation to the Lords, this son of a Russian spy is still formally regarded as a concern by our security services. According to the report, the risk is assessed as low because he doesn't see classified documents. Well, that may be true. But, but here's where the real problem is. Johnson forced this appointment against the better judgment of both security services and the House of Lords Appointments Commission. Everybody involved was concerned by this appointment. They all reluctantly went along with it as a direct result of Boris Johnson's insistence. Now, what does that tell you about Boris Johnson? It tells you he ignores national security advice, especially when that advice is very strongly put to him. And Boris Johnson does get to see classified documents and above. In fact, there are no documents that he is not allowed to see if he asks for them. Also emerged recently that he was in the habit of leaving these lying around in his Downing Street flat. It was pointed out that his wife or any of her friends could easily have been able to come across them. The same would apply, of course, to any of Johnson's friends who may be visiting as well. Concerns were raised at the time. Publicly, Byline Times and The Guardian wrote, wrote articles about it. Um, concerns seem to be absent from the page of the right-wing press, however. I've seen it suggested this is because the journalists in most of the papers wouldn't have been, like, immorally covering as such, just that they wouldn't dare 
to do so for fear of falling foul of either Lebedev, who is himself a, a media mogul of sorts, or other sympathetic and powerful people in the industry, including Murdoch, including Paul Dacre, for example. The fear of losing your job, powerful gag in journalism, I suppose. However, a few days ago, the Times did run an article asking why the security concerns were changed after the personal intervention of Boris Johnson. You know, when asked about this, Dominic Raab, who, who's the guy who pretends to be Deputy Prime Minister, he dismissed the concern, saying, oh, there's, there's a robust system in place. The thing is, yes, there is normally a robust system in place. That robust system involved our security services vetting this potential peer and saying, yeah, we've got concerns, this ain't a good idea. But the system is not so robust as to be independent of the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister can overrule any concerns that our intelligence officers may have and did so in this case. And, and this is what's happened. It was reported back in 2020 at the time that the vetting process threw up concerns that Lebedev was a national security risk. Then all of a sudden, the assessment didn't go away. It's just that the, the objections were downgraded to uh, probably low risk. Yeah, all right then. The House of Lords Appointment Commission was reported to be very concerned especially once the Russia report had been published. Remember, the Russia report that, that Boris Johnson tried to suppress had been published at this point. And the report pointed out how vulnerable we were to interference from Putin in particular, and the Commission was very wary of this appointment. They wrote to the Prime Minister with their concerns, but Johnson just battered it all aside and Lebedev entered Parliament as an unelected Lord. He even boasted that the son of a KGB officer was now in Parliament, his exact words were, what a success for our system. Now, I've taken that statement out of context. It was no doubt intended to mean the British multicultural system, you know, how this immigrant can like be elevated to the House of Lords. But I would still take it as a, an indication that the system he's really referring to is that of Kremlin tentacles in our political system. But unfortunately, the impact of Byline Times and Guardian is limited amongst British voters. Otherwise, we maybe could have averted the national danger that we've now allowed ourselves to be led into. You know, because it has been pointed out, we cannot be certain that as a result of this network of, of Russian oligarchs, that government policy is dictated by the Kremlin. That, that would seem a little far-fetched. After all, we are supplying arms to Ukraine, aren't we? They wouldn't want us to do that. But it has absolutely weakened us is to, uh, to effective action. We're not applying proper sanctions, for example. You know, um, but as, as I say, you know, it, it was initially just Byline Times and The Guardian that reporting on this. Now The Times is reporting on it, albeit a year and a half later. It's re-emerged back into the public eye. And now Labour are demanding an investigation by the Intelligence and Security Committee. After all, the son of a Russian agent, who was an active spy in Britain, was able to enter Parliament as a result of Boris Johnson personally overruling concerns over national security. Like I say, the circumstantial evidence that Johnson is a threat to national security, at least where Russia is concerned, is significant. It's evidence, not proof. But when you couple it with the context of every Western power applying huge levels of sanctions on Putin and Russia, with the sole exception of the UK, you really cannot be anything other than either deeply concerned or deeply blinkered. And as a side, the reason I mention Labour's calls for an investigation are mainly because I wonder if they're intending to push this very hard, if this is the opening salvo. Because our Teflon-coated Prime Minister seems to survive what would have brought down governments in the past, mostly because a majority of MPs in, in any party would have had the decency to withdraw their support after such scandals in the past. I often think Johnson's survival says less about his own powers of survival and more about the modern Conservative Party. Because think about what Johnson offers them. All he offers them is electoral success. That's it. That's all he offers. He doesn't offer them a strong economy. He doesn't offer them a strong voice on the world stage. He doesn't offer them good governance on any level in any area. He offers them another general election win. In return for that, his MP stood by while he corruptly raided the nation's coffers to pay off his cronies and donors. They stood by while he reined back spending promises and put up taxes to pay for it all. They stood back when it became obvious that he's broken his own laws. And they are now standing back when it is at the very least suspicious 
that he is helping Europe's latest megalomaniac. Whether because he is being blackmailed or just because of loyalty to his Russian agent friends makes no difference. Tory MPs are standing back with their eyes wide open now and allowing it to occur. So it may be interesting to see what their reaction will be if Starmer and Labour do push this very hard in the coming months and if Tory MPs will still do nothing. Is there a chance that Labour could get the country talking about Boris Johnson, a criminal and maybe even a traitor running their government? But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.